of the inward life. The kingdom of God is within you, saith the Lord. Turn thee with all thine heart to the Lord, and forsake this miserable world, and thou shalt find rest unto thy soul. Learn to despise outward things, and to give thyself to things inward, and thou shalt see the kingdom of God come within thee. For the kingdom of God is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, and it is not given to the wicked. Christ will come to thee, and show thee his consolation, if thou prepare a worthy mansion for him within thee. All his glory and beauty is from within, and there it pleaseth him to dwell. He often visiteth the inward man, and holdeth with him sweet discourse, giving him soothing consolation, much peace, friendship exceeding wonderful. 2. Go to, faithful soul, Prepare thy heart for this bridegroom, that he may vouchsafe to come to thee and dwell within thee. For so he saith, If any man loveth me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Give, therefore, place to Christ, and refuse entrance to all others. When thou hast Christ, thou art rich and hast sufficient." He shall be thy provider and faithful watchman in all things, so that thou hast no need to trust in men, for men soon change and swiftly pass away, but Christ remaineth for ever, and standeth by us firmly even to the end. 3. There is no great trust to be placed in a frail and mortal man, even though he be useful and dear to us, Neither should much sorrow arise within us if sometimes he oppose and contradict us. They who are on thy side today may tomorrow be against thee, and often are they turned round like the wind. Put thy whole trust in God, and let him be thy fear and thy love. He will answer for thee himself, and will do for thee what is best. Here hast thou no continuing city, and wheresoever thou art, Thou art a stranger and a pilgrim, and thou shalt never have rest unless thou art closely united to Christ within thee. 4. Why dost thou cast thine eyes hither and thither, since this is not the place of thy rest? In heaven ought thy habitation to be, and all earthly things should be looked upon as it were in the passing by. All things pass away, and thou equally with them. Look that thou cleave not to them, lest thou be taken with them and perish. Let thy contemplation be on the Most High, and let thy supplication be directed unto Christ without ceasing. If thou canst not behold high and heavenly things, rest thou in the passion of Christ, and dwell willingly in his sacred wounds. For if thou devoutly fly to the wounds of Jesus, and the precious marks of the nails and the spear, thou shalt find great comfort in tribulation, nor will the slights of men trouble thee much, and thou wilt easily bear their unkind words. 5. Christ also, when he was in the world, was despised and rejected of men, and in his greatest necessity was left by his acquaintance and friends to bear these reproaches. Christ was willing to suffer and be despised, and darest thou complain of any? Christ had adversaries and gainsayers, and dost thou wish to have all men thy friends and benefactors? Whence shall thy patience attain her crown, if no adversity befall thee? If thou art unwilling to suffer any adversity, how shalt thou be the friend of Christ? Sustain thyself with Christ and for Christ, if thou wilt reign with Christ. 6. If thou hadst once entered into the mind of Jesus, and hadst tasted, yea, even a little of his tender love, then wouldst thou care naught for thine own convenience or inconvenience, but wouldst rather rejoice at trouble brought upon thee, because the love of Jesus maketh a man to despise himself. He who loveth Jesus, and is inwardly true and free from inordinate affections, is able to turn himself readily unto God, and to rise above himself in spirit, and to enjoy fruitful peace. 7. 
He who knoweth things as they are, and not as they are said or seem to be, he truly is wise, and is taught of God more than of men. He who knoweth how to walk from within, and to set little value upon outward things, requireth not places, nor waiteth for seasons, for holding his intercourse with God. The inward man quickly recollecteth himself, because he is never entirely given up to outward things. No outward labor and no necessary occupations stand in his way, but as events fall out, so doth he fit himself to them. He who is rightly disposed and ordered within careth not for the strange and perverse conduct of men. A man is hindered and distracted in so far as he is moved by outward things. 8. If it were well with thee, and thou wert purified from evil, all things would work together for thy good and profiting. For this cause do many things displease thee and often trouble thee, that thou art not yet perfectly dead to thyself, nor separated from all earthly things. Nothing so defileth and entangleth the heart of man as impure love towards created things. If thou rejectest outward comfort, thou wilt be able to contemplate heavenly things and frequently to be joyful inwardly.